This is your WLAK Daily News Roundup for Lake Air, 107.5 FM and 1260 AM in Amory. Civic Media News. I'm Terry Bell. Here's what Wisconsin needs to know. Wisconsin is getting $124 million from the federal government to help people put solar panels on their homes. The money comes from the Inflation Reduction Act. It's part of $7 billion in grants for solar installations announced by President Biden. The money is going to the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation and the Midwest Tribal Energy Resources Association. The University of Wisconsin at Madison is extending its free bachelor's degrees for many education students for another two years. The Wisconsin Teacher Pledge is paid for with private donations. It covers the cost of college for students who promise to stay in Wisconsin and teach school after they graduate. Nearly 800 people have gone through the program since it started in 2020. Vice President Kamala Harris says she came to Wisconsin Monday to remind voters that Donald Trump appointed three of the U.S. Supreme Court justices who helped overturn Roe. When we think about what is at stake, it is absolutely about freedom. President Biden's team is shoring up the base in a state where 48,000 Democrats cast uninstructed protest votes in April. Governor Evers calls Donald Trump's criticisms of Megan Wolf lies and irrational. Wisconsin's top election official got increased security after recent threats. Evers says if it keeps up, he might get the state Justice Department involved. Trump and his supporters accuse Wolf of orchestrating election fraud, even though they've produced no proof. Women running for office are on high alert for political violence this year. Threats not only pose a physical risk, they're putting women candidates at a financial disadvantage. We see women candidates and incumbents right now having to pay for security, right? Having to put in their budgets and their campaign funds and their line items, you know, for their campaigns, a security detail. Erin Velarde is with the group Vote Run Lead. She's urging party leaders to speak out against political violence. The man accused of killing and mutilating a 19-year-old college student in Milwaukee is pleading not guilty. Maxwell Anderson was in court Monday. He's charged in the death of Sade Robinson. Her severed remains have been turning up around Milwaukee County since after police say the two went on a date on April 1st. I'm Terry Bell, Civic Media News. Now here's what you need to know closer to home. For WLAK News, I'm James Kelly. The Duluth City Council voted against going forward with a nearly $4 million affordable housing resolution on Monday night. Heading into the meeting, the city had $3.9 million in COVID-era relief funds left over that it was looking to put to good use. If the money isn't spent by the end of the year, the city will lose the funding entirely. The resolution involved giving the money to the Housing Redevelopment Authority, but some council members argued the money should go towards market rate housing instead. In honor of Earth Day and Forest Appreciation Week, Wisconsin Governor Tony Evers has announced the state will drastically increase its tree planting goals. Governor Evers had previously vowed that the state would plant 75 million trees by the end of 2030 as a boost to the environment. This week, Governor Evers announced the state will increase that goal to 100 million trees. As of the end of year 2023 report, the state had already planted 32 million new trees, getting nearly halfway to the original planting goal. Superior businesses and residents took to the streets on Monday for Earth Day cleanup events. According to a Northern News Now report, some businesses and organizations have even adopted some of the public green spaces in the city, like parks, trails, and boat launches, and got to cleaning those spaces with the help of volunteers. Some popular parks like Oaks Park and Heritage Park got cleanups, and a skate ramp was even repainted. Organizers hope they can keep the positive momentum going throughout the week. A highway crash involving a St. Louis County patrol car ended in the arrest of the driver who caused the crash. According to the St. Louis County Sheriff's Office, one of their deputies had pulled over and parked at a crash scene on Highway 169 near Campground Road on Monday when another car crashed into the deputy's patrol car. The driver of the car was arrested and charged with DWI, and a search of the car allegedly resulted in the discovery of illegal drugs. The deputy was not seriously injured in the crash. Arrest warrants have been issued for three people in relation to the fatal stabbing in downtown Duluth on April 12th. According to the Duluth Police Department, authorities are searching for 26-year-old Darius Plummer, the man accused of killing 25-year-old Chantel Moose, as well as two men who allegedly fired guns towards Plummer following the incident. Court documents allege Moose and Plummer had gotten into an altercation at a popular bar before it became physical, and the two other men became involved. 
If you live in western Wisconsin, you may see small planes flying overhead starting in May, spraying treatment to prevent the spread of spongy moths in certain areas. The Wisconsin Department of Agriculture, Trade, and Consumer Protection will target areas across the region to remove the invasive species in their caterpillar form, including Barron, Chippewa, Dunn, and Rusk counties. That treatment will span from May to early June, after which a new substance will be sprayed to target the adult male spongy moths. Construction on I-35 near the Atkinson Bridge in Carleton County begins this week, creating some changes on the road for drivers. The northbound lane of I-35 will be closed to install new guardrail supports, which the Minnesota Department of Transportation says should take about a week to complete. Beginning in May, the highway will switch to single lanes in both directions for the remainder of the project. Officials expect to complete the construction sometime in September on the over $4 million renovation. A Super 1 Foods in Duluth suffered serious damage when a man intentionally drove through the main entrance on Saturday. According to the Duluth Police Department, a 48-year-old man was arrested after driving through the entrance to the West Duluth Grocery Store on Saturday morning. The man, who was an employee at the store, was allegedly having a mental health crisis. He was taken to a local hospital for evaluation before his arrest and another employee suffered minor injuries. Authorities did not release the man's name. And that's what you need to know. For WLAK News, I'm James Kelly. The Brewers let one slip away high. I'm Mike Clemens with sports. Baseball, the Brewers losing in Pittsburgh 4-2. The Brewers starter Joe Ross had pitched to 79 pitches, holding the Pirates to one run, but manager Pat Murphy pulled him in the sixth inning. Murphy asked, should he have kept him in a little longer? Uh, No. (laughs) It's always what's best for the pitcher. Squeezing more out of somebody this early in the season isn't what we like to do. The Brewers starters have pitched the fewest amount of innings so far this year in Major League Baseball. Game two between the Bucks and the Pacers in Milwaukee. The Pacers trying to figure out how they lost game one Sunday night. I spoke to Ford Pascal Siakam. Obviously we, we see what you know was, was thrown at us and we go and learn from it in terms of just like rotations and different things like that but also you know mentally it's just like they played harder than us in the first half so and I think it was clear as day when we came back in the second half I thought it was a lot better. The Bucks Bobby Portis on winning game one without Giannis. Knowing our situation we're in, obviously we have one of the best players in the world who's not playing, so it was big for other guys to step up. The biggest thing in the playoffs is just winning the game, no matter how it is. If it's a street fight, if it's an ugly game, it's, you're hitting 23, right? well, however it gets done, um, the main thing is just to win. Come come back tomorrow, correct some things, and then get back at it on Tuesday. College basketball, one of the best players in UW Green Bay history, is returning to coach. The Press Gazette says that Kayla Teklog will be named the women's team's next head coach. The now 35-year-old Kayla Carius has been the women's head coach at South Dakota. The NFL draft is this Thursday night. Brian Goodikens asks if the draft board is ready yet in the Packers' war room. Really, through this past weekend, we kind of got to a point where you know, we feel really good about where it's at. And we'll probably have one more meeting this evening and lock it up really till Thursday. That's Packers General Manager Brian Goodikens. With sports, I'm Mike Clemens. Mix 94.7 weather today, partly cloudy with a chance of a shower after about 2 or 3 o'clock this afternoon. Our high 66, the wind west at 15 to 25. We may have a gust or two up to 30 or 35 here today. Tonight, scattered showers are low 34. Tomorrow, sunny 58. By Thursday, mostly sunny with a high of 64. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable on Mix 94.7 KMCH. Temperature now 49. That's your WLAK Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at lakeair.radio.